we're going to be advertised and that way you can really follow the protocols of COVID. And um, yeah, prayer box, healing tests is one of the workers will call you and you're going to know your time to go up there and have your turn. Uh, we just ask you after the prayer box to keep your vibrations, keep the silence and the, and the prayer vibration so we can keep the room on, the, on this healing, on this light of love. All right, and after the healing test, you're welcome to go home. If you wish to stay to talk with any of the workers, or if you think you're in need of any spiritual assistance and would like to have a chat with the workers of the house, you please just sign the left hand side of the book so you know you would like to have some assistance. And then after the healing passes, we're gonna call you and then you can have a, uh, a chat with some of the workers of the house. And then we can try to understand what your needs and in what way we can help you. All right. So we we have a Zoom going on as well. So every time you have a question or would like to make any contribution, just speak, try to speak a bit louder so people from Zoom can hear you guys as well. All right. And people from Zoom can interact with us. Hi, Colleen. She's already online. Um, and then many times, then one of the guys that's looking after the Zoom will uh, let you guys know about the questions that they raise. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> so any volunteers here? We, we love volunteers over here. So any volunteers to read a little uh, prayer book and any volunteer to our initial prayer today. You don't need to be shy because you're for first day, but don't need to feel pressure as well. So just if you feel in your heart, you'd like to participate on that way. Any volunteers for the little book? I can, come on, Ka. can you do the little book for us today? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, so she's going to read for us the message and then she's going to do a prayer. And then after that, Adelita will start the presentation tonight. Thank you, guys. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to, to be back here on PASC. Tonight, we are going to talk a little bit about self-knowledge. We talk about, uh, we talk a lot about self-knowledge um, in basically all of the books that Spiritism brings to us. It is brought up a lot the self-knowledge. So the approach that I'm take here today, it's more, it's a little bit different from what we usually speak of, but it's actually unifying everything together. So 
when we talk about self-knowledge, it is about looking at ourselves. It is a bit vague, but it is a constant reflection exercise. And I chose the words really carefully for this slide. And what that means is when you want to understand what's happening or if you want to understand yourself and get to know yourself a little bit better, we need to start paying attention on ourselves. This paying attention on ourselves, it doesn't happen while we are going through Facebook. It doesn't happen when we are going through Netflix. It doesn't happen when you are at a party. It doesn't happen when you are doing a lot of things that happen outside. It only happens when you are in the silence with yourself. When you are with yourself in silence, with no distractions, because then you can look at yourself. We usually try not to look at ourselves. It is natural. So we need to put a bit of discipline, just a little bit of discipline, to stop and look. When you look, you're going to find things like, this didn't feel comfortable today. What was that feeling? This made me a little bit sad. Well, I had a chat with that person and it just doesn't feel right. What is all that? Anger, sadness. Maybe you're gonna find that you were jealous. Maybe you're gonna find that you were maybe too vain or maybe that you were greedy. And finding out those things is not easy and it's not pretty, but it's necessary. And it is something that will happen one way or the other in this life, in the next life, now, when you're a little bit older, when you're very old, it will happen at some point. So if we have a chance to have this knowledge now, I invite you all to start. So let's start to take those few minutes that we have and not fill the space with noise, with thoughts and with ideas stimulating us from an outside. But let's start looking at ourselves in silence and try to understand what is this feeling? Why am I not feeling well? Or why am I feeling so great? Why am I feeling so much love? Why am I feeling so happy at this moment? Why am I in such a joy? Why? Where is this coming from? And this do not come by chance. This is an exercise. It's not one exercise but it is a constant exercise. In the Spirit's book, um, St. Augustine says that he used to do that every night before going to sleep. Reflect what happened through the day. How did you feel? How many people did you meet? How did it go for you? What did you do? Do you approve of your actions? Don't you approve? Why? This is a self-knowledge. So St. Augustine said that he did that every day before he went to bed. So we're not St. Augustine, but I guess once a week, it's not asking too much. Or maybe when it's something comes and overwhelms your feelings and your emotions, just take your time to sit with yourself and think, reflect. It is a reflection inside. It is a process as well. It's not something that you will find answers the first time that you stop and look at your heart. It takes time. It takes once, twice, three times. Remember, exercise, process. It's hard at the beginning and it gets easier. 
the beginning you find a few things or one thing or the other and then as you exercise it makes it easier you're going to find more things it is a process it is an exercise because you get better when you do that it is constant you're not going to find out everything you are if you stop for five minutes it needs to be constant because we evolve every day we are not the same as we were yesterday or the week before we evolve so if you stop and think today and the same situation happens in about a year, you can't say, oh, I know what this is about. No, you don't. You're not that person anymore. So dig it in, dig it in your heart. What's in there? What's hidden there? When you do that with the situations that are outside, you uncover feelings, you uncover emotions, you uncover a lot of things that matches and reflects and reacts with comes from the outside. It's a reaction from the outside. Something comes from the outside and you, you throw something back at it. If it's love, if it's joy, if it's anger, if it's sadness. The invitation from the spiritism is get to know what is coming from you. Get to know what are you reacting at. <clears throat> it's very important when you find and when you dig to understand what is. So this uncomfortable feeling, is this sadness, is this anger? Why am I feeling like this? Where is this coming from? I don't know you guys, but I find myself many times with a tightness in my heart or tightness in my throat, and I don't even know why am I feeling like this. So it is for us to sit quiet and look back. Why am I feeling like this? What is this feeling? Where is it coming from? Is it because someone told me that I don't look pretty today or because anyone made any comment about the way I'm dressed? It's because nobody said hello to me with the enthusiasm that I was expecting. Or is it because the bread that I usually buy, it's a bit more expensive today and they raise the prices and I'm angry because of that. Why, what is it? Where is it coming from? So these are little steps that we can take back to look inside ourselves. When we finally find and we get to things like jealousy, envy, anger, sadness, greedy, when we find those things, it's not pretty. And sometimes we have to sit on it. And the best we can do is try to understand Most people, when finding out those feelings and what those, oh, I'm going to call it ugly feelings that we have and the ugly things inside us that we don't like, that we do not approve, but we are like that and we can't change like this. There are two things that people usually do with it. You either, okay, I'm maybe. You know, that dress was gorgeous and I'm envy about it. You either accept it and you see it or you just say, no, nah, that, that's too much. That dress doesn't fit the occasion. She was just trying to do this. And then you are angry and upset and you don't want to see that you are actually envy. And you're being angry and you don't realize that that's happening. These are called those feelings, those things that we don't like about ourselves. They are called in the psychology, our hidden self, our shadow. And our shadows, they work on the background because they are not out there for us to notice and to see. They're always on the background. So they always 
influence us in our actions, in our reactions, in the way we do things, the way we talk to people, and they motivate us to do things. But we are not always aware that they are there. This usually happens because we don't want to explore that. We don't like what we see. So if we unsee and pretend that it's not there, it's easier. So we just go through it and keep going and keep thinking that the dress was not suitable to the occasion, that they are charging too much for the bread and etc. Okay. This denial happens. And in the psychology, they, they say that we project on other people. So when we decide not to see or not to accept those things that happen inside of ourselves, we project in other people, not always. Sometimes it is genuine, sometimes things don't fit how they're supposed to fit. But most times, our criticism, our judgment, our irony is usually on something that we don't think it's fitting in ourselves. So I'm fine, but he is not, but she is not. It's always the other. It's always the other person that is inconvenient. It's always the other person that is impatient, you know. So we have to be aware that this might happen and work the reverse. Why am I so angry with that person? Where is this coming from? Again, if you look inside, you might find that you are actually projecting something that you don't think it's nice, but you don't realize it happened to yourself. But when the other people do it, then you judge and you condemn. Does it all make sense so far? <clears throat> so those influences, those tendencies that we have um, in the spiritist language, we say our vicissitudes, they are usually, they are, they are on the background. They are always pushing us to say things and to do things, right? And when we see our life as a relationship with other people and people around us, this is when the conflicts start. So what is usually said is that, you know, or it was the one thing that broke our relationship, either friendship or um, a marriage or any kind of relationship, or she did this or he did that. But... What they are trying to explain, um, when I say they, I mean the spirits who wrote, uh, who helped Alan Carter to write the book of the spiritism. Um, they are trying to say that it actually has already happened with those small little attitudes and criticism and judgments that we go and we throw slowly, you know, is that little pinch that we do. Oh, this doesn't look, oh, but if you have done it, and if you've done it, and if you've been there, or if you haven't noticed, and those little things, day after day, that is actually what slowly kills the relationship. And then you need just the one last pin pulled, and then all falls apart. So those, uh, our hidden self that I was talking about, those little emotions that take control of us without us being aware of, this is what needs to be controlled because they are the destroyer of the relationships. They are the destroyer of relationships with others and they are the destroyer of the relationship that we have with ourselves. Because once we don't accept our feelings and our emotions and we don't see them for what they are and we acknowledge that they are there, we separate 
from ourselves. We break up with ourselves. No, I'm not this person just because I don't want to be this person and I deny it. But the envy is there. The impatience is there. The anger is there. But it's all on the background. It's all thrown to the subconscious. And here, I'm all smiles. I'm very patient. I take my breath. But at the back, I'm boiling. This doesn't change anything of who I am in my soul, my intimate field. It doesn't change anything. So the theory says that once we don't, because we don't have the habit of sitting with ourselves and getting to know what's inside those feelings and those emotions, this area, this hidden self, it gets hidden from us. As the name says, it's our hidden self. It's unexplored. We do not explore it, but it is there. In being there, it acts at its will. So because you don't realize it's there, it is unleashed. It just goes unraveled, hurting people with your anger and hurting yourself as well, you know, with your anger, with your sadness and with your jealousy and with your impatience, this just comes out in an explosion. Once you understand that you feel this way, that I'm going to pick an example here so it's easy to understand. Once you understand that you were angry because you were impatient, that you could have waited and you didn't, and you understand where this is coming from, and you understand why this happened, you understand then the in patience in the other. Once you understand in patience in the other, it doesn't hurt you as much anymore because you can feel it inside you and you know that you it's hard to control it and you cannot just rip impatience out. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in, in a couple of minutes. Once you do that, you, you just accept the impatience in others as well. You accept that your husband is jealous of you too. And then he's acting the way he's acting. You understand. And it doesn't hurt as much in yourself. And because you understand, you, you are not so brutal on the way back as well. It makes the relationship easier. It makes the relationship lighter. Because you are not fighting. You are understanding each other. You are not separating. You are actually trying to bring yourselves together. You're trying to understand what's happening. So it softens our actions and our reactions towards people. Because we understand that we are the same. And we understand that sometimes we say things and we do things that it's been too much. So we understand that the others sometimes have that reaction too. When we deny that knowledge, we deny this understanding in others. So we stand in a place where everything other people do to you hurt you. 
because you were so perfect and you're such a bad, uh, such a good person that anything that the others do to you is extremely bad. Once you accept that you are not perfect and you are not, I mean, you those bad feelings and emotions in yourself ripped off already, then it's just much easier to get along with people at work, at home, in friendships and overall. When we understand our vulnerabilities as well, when we understand that we don't feel safe and we don't feel secure facing certain situations, it makes it easier as well for us to deal with it. If you realize that you are an impatient, impatient person, it's easier for you to be a little bit more patient next time when you need, because you know you are going through it. So you're going to make things around that situation a little bit easier for you through your understanding. Or you're going to tell the person, look, I'm not very patient. Can we just get to the point? Can you tell me, can you summarize for me what you mean? Because I don't want to be here for five minutes. Can you just tell me? It's things like that. <clears throat> so what do we do with those bad tendencies? What do we do with those vicissitudes? What do we do with our impatience? What do we do with our anger, anger, with our jealousy, with our envy, with our pride? What do we do with all that? What do we do with the ugly things in us once we discover, as they say, you know, those emotions and those feelings? And that's a question that I will give you a minute to think. Can we change it? Can we change being in patience if you take a breath and if you understand that you are in patience? Can you stop being jealous if you take a breath and you say, okay, you can go and talk to that guy. It's fine. Does it really take your jealousy away? To each level, we can control it. And who controls who? I want you to think for a few seconds about those, quests, those questions. Can we change it? And I want you to think not about your neighbor or about your mother-in-law or your husband or your girlfriend. I want you to think about yourself. Think about something that you don't like about yourself. And tell me, don't, don't tell me, just think about it. When you take a deep breath and put a smile in your face, does it go away? I think a lot about my daughter when I tell her, you have to go and say sorry, and then they go, sorry. Are they really being sorry? Are they really being sorry? that even the word comes out very rough, sorry. It's not being sorry. This is not being sorry. Can we control it? Can we change it? The spirit book says that, and I'm sorry if it comes to a shock. No, we cannot change it. Not in this life, not in the next life, not on the next life, we cannot change it. But we can start to transform it. Change it, it's like this. Transforming is about our first slide. It's a process. Because we are immortal souls, it is a process. This life amongst our other lives is just one minute 
in a lifetime? Can you change everything you don't like about yourself in a minute? You can't. That's a good thing. That's awesome. Because that means that we don't have to go out there pretending. Now, I'm not telling you to go out there being angry at everyone and throwing your impatience at everyone. No, this is not it. We are still people who have to respect others. There is, we, we need, at least we owe to other people is respect and to be civil. But we can control it. Can't we control it? Do you guys think you can control your impatience to a point that you don't hurt other people? Yes, we can. So this is what is expected from us in this lifetime. Control. Think of a wild horse. You go to the field, to the bush, and you just jump on a horse. And you say, horse, go this way. Horse goes that way. Slow down. The horse controls you. The horse goes and it takes you wherever the horse wants to. This is an analogy about what our tendencies, bad tendencies and emotions do to us, usually. What the spirit is, is proposing to us is control it. The horse will still be there. Your impatience will still be there. Your anger will still be there. But you are going to control. You're going to control it not to hurt other people. You're going to control it not to abuse other people. You're going to control it so you don't have anything in your body from allergies to cancer to you name it, diseases that are response to your explosions of those feelings and emotions and bad feelings that go uncontrolled. We can do that. For a long time, personally, I was very disappointed with religion in general because they ask us to be patient, they ask us to forgive, they ask us all those virtues that I find really hard. I'm talking about myself. I find it really hard. When you are in a hurry to go somewhere and someone else comes, ah, oh, can you please? No, I can't. I need to get going. Do I need to be this rude? No, I don't. I owe this person respect. Look, I'm sorry. I'm really busy. I need to go now. I'll get back to you. It doesn't hurt anyone's feelings. I'm still in patience. But the trick is, once you understand and you see that this impatience is in there, this is what transforms it. You don't need to do anything else about it. It is in the book. The spirits brought this knowledge to us. Not any spirit. Spirits more evolved than us. It is something that is hard to grasp, but I think it's pretty reasonable. If you stop and think, it's pretty reasonable. What is expected from us at this time? And it comes to our theme again today, self-knowledge. This is what we need to evolve and to improve in this lifetime, self-knowledge. Understand and see what is hidden underneath feelings and emotions. Just the fact of you acknowledging it and seeing that it is there, it brings the change for better. It brings the change for better in yourself. You reflect in others because instead of shouting, get out of my way, I'm in a hurry. You bring yourself together with the other person. I'm sorry. I'll be with you when I'm back. You're not separating yourself. 
you're bringing yourself together. Does anyone have any question about this? Does anyone want to say anything about this so far? No? You're almost falling asleep? Okay. This is a phrase from Jesus. Jackson, can you read it for us, please? Have a reconciliating attitude with your adversary while traveling with him. So it will not happen to him and you the judge. Then to the answer, let this is a metaphor and if you think have a reconciliating attitude with your adversary so it wouldn't happen for him to hand you to the judge what does that mean if he's the, your adversary and you have things against him how is he going to hand you to the judge do you think Jesus was in his right mind when he said that? If you really look, and I think we need to start reading things a little bit deeper and looking at the deeper meaning of things. If you reconciliate, and it says here, reconciliating attitude. So again, it is the intention. Again, why is he an adversary? Let's speak again the same example. He was impatient and he was rude with you. You were rude to me. You were impatient to me. As you throw this to someone else, you're not looking at yourself. Because we need to remember where we are. We are in planet Earth. We see it in the proofs and trials world where the evil is more present than the good. So who are you? Who do you think you are to tell him that he's impatient? Who do you think you are? to tell your enemy, your adversary, or whoever it is, that he is, you name it, impatient, angry, envy, greedy. Who do you think you are? We are all in the same boat here. We are all in the same boat. We are all on the same level. One's are a tiny bit up than the others. If we had more good than bad in this world. If each one of you had, we would not be here. And I'm sorry if this comes as a shock to you, but we need to start facing it. If we don't start facing it and getting to know ourselves and find those things in there, because they are hidden and they are driving us, we are going to continue here in planet Earth. Now, if you want to go to a little bit better place, that's our chance. So instead of pointing your finger to your adversary, telling him and judging him and criticizing him, because once you do that to the other, you are criticizing yourself. So it wouldn't happen for him to hand you to the judge. So the same way you judge others, you're going to be judged. If you do not understand that he is in patience because his child is in hospital about to go through a very serious surgery and he doesn't have time to, and he didn't have the kindness in his heart at that moment to show you because he's in a hurry. You will be judged when you go through a similar situation. Are you gonna pass the test? 
Are you? Sometimes we don't realize that other people are put to test and are put to proof, and it's easy to point a finger. Put yourself in the other situation. If you think you would have done better than him, and be realistic. So as you are indulgent with yourself, be indulgent with other. So then you would you wouldn't end up in jail. It's a metaphor. So this is what this parable is about. And I don't even want to bring up that the adversary, I wasn't there to ask him, but there is a big chance and it would fit if Jesus was actually talking that the adversary is ourselves. Are those hidden emotions that we choose to deny because we don't want to acknowledge that they are there, because they are not pretty the way we wanted them to be. They are our adversary. So reconciliating with our adversary is understanding that we are in the same boat. It is okay to be impatient. It is okay to be angry, because you can't change it. You can't. You can make it a little bit better and improve through self-knowledge, yes. But until then, reconciliate and this is an invitation for jesus reconciliate yourself with your impatience reconciliate yourself with your anger reconciliate yourself with your jealousy so maybe next time you tell your wife or your girlfriend look i don't feel comfortable when you go and you talk to that friend of yours can i come with you or even the fact of you putting that out loud will make you feel better. So you can deal with the situation a little bit better. Or you can hear something, you can hear feedback from your girlfriend, from your wife, in this example that I'm giving you, that will comfort you. <clears throat> Being more truth to our own selves. So, as I was saying before, what happens is, this is all, all we are talking about is our ego, right? I want to keep this as a surprise to the end, but I'll just say it out loud. Our ego, it's what's hidden underneath. All those, all those emotions and bad feelings and bad tendencies and vicissitudes, selfishness. It's behind everything. That's what you're going to find. So that's a little clue there. Selfishness. Behind impatience. Behind anger. Behind jealousy. Behind greedy. Behind all the vicissitudes and bad tendencies that we have. It's all there. Selfishness. Find it. Your mission is to find it. In this life, you have to find where you are being selfish. Sorry, I, I think I said something else before. I'm talking about selfishness. Once you choose to deny your feelings, as I was saying before, you put yourself into this separation within yourself. You separate what's in there to what you want to be, so then you are true. And then you separate yourself from this other person impatient person that's coming in the time that I need to go in a hurry. You're separating yourself from them too. So you become separated from yourself and from everyone. This is our ego and this is selfishness. It causes separation. When you accept and you are when you accept and you look inside and you see all this and you respect your impatience, you respect your feelings, you respect your emotions, and you respect those emotions coming from the others. This unites people. It brings you together because you understand we are on the same boat. It's okay. 
I understand. I understand why you're angry. It's okay. I'm not taking that personally. It's not with me. Because I had my expectation that you'd stop everything you were doing to come and listen to me. I didn't notice that you were in a hurry. This brings peace. This brings harmony between yourself and yourself and between yourself and the others. You find a balance between yourself and your hidden self thing come together. This, the more evolved spirits say that humans live dependent on polarity. You know, we have the bad and we have the good. We have the hot and we have the cold. We have the black and we have the white. And we don't realize that the cold is nothing more than the absence of heat. People from execs, engineers, they will know that. There is no cold. There is absence of heat. There is no black. There is only absence of light. There is no bad or evil. It's not me. It's not Adelita who is telling you that. But the more evolved spirits are telling us that. There is no evil. There is absence of good. This good is in there. We need to nurture it. As we need to nurture the hot. As we need to nurture as we need to nurture the cold, as we need to nurture the black, if you get my meaning, because those things don't exist by themselves. They are lacking of something. Once we understand that there is no polarity, it's only one. It's not you and me. It's only one. It's not my bad feelings and my good feelings. It's all one. Some need to be polished, but it's all one. This is a paragraph, and I'm going to end with this one. And I want you to pay attention on the words, because if we just read through, we won't get the meaning. I need you to look at the meaning of each word in there. Self-knowledge is an innate ability. Stop. It's an innate ability. Can anyone tell me what innate means? It's, it's naturally, it's, it's already there. You were born with it. You were born with the ability to gradually perceive, not instantly perceive. Remember the first slide? Exercise, process, gradually perceive. Everything that needs to be transformed, not changed. Look how beautiful this phrase is. This is liberating. Innate ability, we are born being able to slowly see everything that it needs to be transformed that is in us. Self-knowledge amplifies our consciousness about our sleeping potentials. Remember what I said, there is no good and evil. There is only lack of good. There is no polarity amplifies our consciousness about our sleeping potentials so that gradually we become what we really are in essence. What are we in essence? Who created us? What's in there that we are born with that we need to nourish? That's love. That's the divine spark, because we are God. Each one of us, we are God. The divine is in us. The divine spark is in us. The good is in us. We just need to nourish it. A bit of water, a bit of fertilizer, and self-knowledge.
It's there, the recipe, ready to go. Now, I think we can achieve that gradually. Okay? That's my message today for you guys. I'm sorry if it was too intense or boring or too theoric, and I hope that you guys can sit on it tonight before you go to bed. And just think about those words and, and try to make a space in your life so you can sit with yourself. That's the most important thing. Okay? Leave Facebook a little bit. Leave Netflix a little bit. Leave your parties. Leave your friends a little bit. Find the time to sit outside and appreciate the moon. Appreciate the star. Appreciate the sun. The beautiful blue sky. The trees. Sit with yourself and appreciate the beauty within yourself. Just let it grow. Okay? Does anyone have any questions or any comments? Great. You're all good students. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Um, we are going to go straight into the prayer box. Okay. Do you want to turn it off or? Yeah. So now we're going to the prayer box. After that, we're going to have the healing passes and just ask you guys uh, stay in your seat and we're going we're gonna to let you know when it's the time to go to the healing passes. All right? Thank you. And after the healing passes, I think Dai explained already. If you guys want to leave straight away, you don't need to wait for us. So you can leave or you feel free to sit and wait in prayer. Okay? I'll invite you to close your eyes. Relax in your chair. Take a deep and slow breath. A couple of them, deep and slow, relaxing your muscles, clearing up your mind. Let's concentrate on the music for a moment. Let's just glide there, the piano notes. notes. Just let them float in the air. Take a deep breath. Relax, feet, legs, knees, your thighs, your hips, your belly, your chest, hands, shoulders. Take a final breath, deep, relax your head. You're going to focus this exercise of the prayer box tonight. We're going to make our minds work to bring forth the love, kindness, the goodness, the divine spark. As you breathe slowly and deep through this exercise, you feel the warm connection with everyone in the room. We are one. Everyone in the room, we are just one. I want you to think now of the people that you know that are in need of help. Think of the names, think of the faces. Think of the ones that you want to send light. As you think of this light, I want you to imagine this light coming from your heart 
right in the center of your chest is a beacon, just a ray of light to the center of the room is one. Take a deep breath. Think of every single one of them. This beacon of light that you are producing with all your divine spark and your love and your kindness and your compassion because you see how much they need help, how much you want to help. All this love, all this compassion, all this gratitude for everything that they are and they taught you, being in the position that they are, you send forth from your heart this beautiful cone of light, of love. In this light, together, all of us we will reach every single one of them. Every single one reaches them. And they feel relief. They feel comfort. They feel peace. They feel harmony. They can see the light. They can feel their divine spark because it's ours. It's one. It shines in them as it's shining in us. We are all connected. As our light shines here tonight, it shines in every single one of them, bringing comfort, warmth, peace. As we have so much light, I invite you all to expand your thoughts to the ones that you do not know, but that need help, that need comfort, they're desperate. That our light can reach them too. That our light can bring them some comfort, some light. That they too, those ones that we do not know that they're there, feel and we feel one with them, lighting up the divine spark in their hearts too, so they can see the light right in front of them. They can get to the comfort, they can get to safety, so they can find help and comfort for their difficulties. For the ones especially tonight, for the ones that forgot about God and took their own lives because they thought they were going to a better place. For the suicide people, that they too can find tonight light, love, that they too can feel the spark, the divine spark in their hearts, as we feel now, uniting us as one, finding comfort, finding their path, finding healing and comfort for their tears. We expand to the Aboriginal people of the land of Australia. All of them. We expand and we give our gratitude for having us. Our gratitude for the beautiful land that they cultivated from us and that we can share with them tonight our divine spark, lighting their divine spark, 
being one. We are grateful for being here, for the opportunity of being here in Australia at PESC, doing this activity tonight. So we can reach out to all these people in need and we can feel as we really are, as one, one giant divine spark shining through, sending light and sharing love. That we all can feel comforted tonight because we are one. As we take a deep breath, we calm down our minds. We are grateful for this opportunity to be sharing and to be in this space of sharing. For being here doing this exercise, we are grateful. For each one of you, I'm grateful. And we here at PESC are grateful. Take a deep breath and slowly wiggle your toes and your fingers and start feeling the chair and being aware of your surroundings. Don't let the divine spark go. It will stay there. You just need to nourish it. To nourish it. Take it home with you and nourish it. That's the message tonight. Thank you all. And I ask you to stay in prayer, stay in reflection. It's a good opportunity to get to know yourself a little bit better. And we are going to prepare for the passes and we are calling you guys as we go. So just bear with us. Thank you.